let us dive into Notion. Now, I created a little list of what we need to do to make this reflection work inside of the system. The first thing that we want to do is that we want to create a template for each of the Notion of Life elements that require reflection. We then want to have an organized central database in which we can store all of these reflections. Then we want to have reflection questions that actually prompt a reflection, right? Like I mentioned earlier, we want to ask ourselves the right questions. We want to organize all these questions in a central place so that we can easily filter and retrieve them. And then ultimately we want to use all those reflections and layer them on top of each other in our review cycles so that we can start spotting patterns in our reflections. So let's start by having a look at the different elements that require reflection questions. So the first thing that I'm going to do as always is navigate into the database collection zone. And then over here, you can see all of these different elements that make up the system. Now let's, for example, open up this weekly review. If I were to go into this weekly review template, you can see over here that we have a bunch of reflection questions. These are reflections for the upcoming week, but we also have our reflection questions for the previous week. What am I particularly grateful for? What was challenging? What was something that went well? These are all questions that we can ask ourselves during the weekly review. But just like we have questions in the weekly review, we also have questions when we start a new project, right? What is the purpose of my project, the sacrifice that we need to make? And these are all things that we've already explored in previous videos, right? In these videos, I showed you that there's these reflection questions. So what we want to do is to get these reflection questions into the template. But the question then is, how are we going to do this? The simplest way to do this is we could simply create a new template, right? So let's say, for example, we're doing this inside the project tracker, we're making this new project tracker template. And then I ask myself this question, why do I want to do this project? And when can I consider this project to be done, right? These would be two reflection questions I could ask myself, temporary template. And then whenever I generate this template, boom, it will ask me these two questions. And then over here, I can write down my answers. This works, but the problem here is that it's going to be very difficult to retrieve the answers that we gave at a later stage. And the power of this notion of life system is that we can filter through all of these reflections and that we can layer them on top of each other, that over time we can start seeing patterns in them. So in order to do that, what we need is a central database, right? Principle number seven, database first design. We want to store all of our reflections in a central database. So instead of having these questions like this, we want to have a reflections database. So let's say, for example, I would just create that one over here. I'm going to say reflections. This database is going to hold all of my reflections. So I'm just going to put this page to full width for a moment. And the first thing I'm going to do is say this one is going to be the reflection name. And then over here, I'm going to add some writing space. And then the last thing that I need is the reflection question. So I'm going to create this, select over here, I'm going to say question. And then over here, I could have this question, what do I need for this project? And when will this project be a success. Okay. Now I have this question over here, then over here, I can write my answer to this question, and then give this a short little name and say, this was my answer. And the reason why we have this separate writing space is because if you just write your reflection inside of here, this page is going to become very bloated. And when I open this over here, you can see this title is going to be very bloated. So instead, what I usually do is I have some writing space over here, and I simply write inside of this writing space. Now, I can already hear you thinking, why not just write it inside of the page? Yes, we can also do that. But unfortunately, when we filter through a database, we are not able to filter through the content of the pages, right? So if we want to 
filter these reflections. It's better to have it in this writing space because then we can use all the database features that Notion has to also uh, search through this writing space. So that's why I put it in a separate writing property. All right, let me just take some of this text out. Okay, so basically what we're doing here is we're answering these questions inside of a database. And then over time, as I've answered this question multiple times, I could filter this database and say, only show me the reflections that I answered for this particular question. And that is why it's so powerful to put all of our reflections in a database. Because imagine using this system for multiple months or multiple years even. We can filter on a question and see the answer that we gave to this particular question over that long period of time. And that's when we can start spotting patterns. We st start spotting patterns in our behaviors, in how we feel, in our experiences. And that is where a lot of the value comes from. So nice, we created a database, we have these questions, we have this reflection, but now a problem arises because inside of the notion of life system, there is over a hundred different reflection questions. And if we're going to put all these reflection questions in the select menu, it's going to become absolutely huge. So what we want to do is we want to create a separate database in which we have all of our reflection questions. So let's have a look at that one. I'm just going to delete this over here. I'm going to go back into the database collection zone. And then over here, you can see the reflection questions database. Inside this database are all of the reflection questions inside the entire notion of life system. And just for this video, I created this view over here and you can just see how many different questions are in there. And having all these questions in that one little select property is definitely not going to work. Here, 124 questions. That is why we have this separate database. And over here, I've categorized all of these questions by the element that they belong to. And then if necessary, also by the sub category within that element, right? So for the daily review, for example, we have our startup questions and we have our shutdown questions. For the weekly review, we have the questions for the upcoming week and the questions for this week. For the project tracker, we have the questions for the purpose of the project, the sacrifice, and these have all been covered in the respective videos, right? We were, we covered this in the project tracker video. We covered this in the weekly review video, but as you can see over here, all of the questions are stored in a central database. Now, the next thing that we then need to do is to make sure that when we create a reflection, that it is linked to the proper question. So let's go back into the database collection zone. And then over here, we have the reflections database. Now, I'm going to warn you beforehand, this is the most complex part of the whole notion of life system. The way these two databases are structured and set up, it's very complex. I'm going to try to explain it as well as I can. Um, if it's not clear, let me know. I can try to create some separate content, but I'm going to do my best. Just be warned, this can get quite complex. This database over here is where we have all of our reflections. So the actual reflections that we write on a daily basis. If this video is valuable to you, then please like and subscribe down below. It really does help. Let's take, for example, the reflection that we made inside this reflections database. And one of the reflections that we made is that today I am feeling a bit down. That is the reflection. That is the thing that I write down. Then over here, I can see this is the answer to the question daily morning journaling. That is my reflection prompt. And then based on this question, I uh, create this reflection. So this over here is what we earlier put in the select tag, but now instead of that being a select tag, it is a relationship to this reflection questions database, right? This database I just showed you with all of these questions in it, we relate that to the actual reflections database so that we can then say, this reflection that I made is related to that question. And if I were to open this one, you can see we have all of these reflection questions from the reflection question database that we could link these answers to. And once again, we can also use that to apply this filter where I say reflection question contains, let's say for example, daily morning journaling, boom. Now over here, I see all of the reflections that I made for this specific question, right? So we took these questions, 
put them in a separate database and linked this database to our reflections database so that we can now say this entry for my reflection is related to this specific reflection question. Okay, that's step number one. We've now related our reflection questions to the actual reflection that we make. Now, the second thing that we want to do is that we also want to relate the reflection to the proper template in which it has been generated. So over here, you can see that this question of daily morning journaling has been answered on many different days, right? It's been answered in the daily review of February 20th. It's been answered in the February 21st, February 22nd. So this question is being asked in separate templates, right? You could imagine we have a project going on that each project has its own reflections that are made, right? I just want to see the reflections for the purpose of this project. I don't want to see the reflection of the purpose for all the projects. So there's two things that we want to do when we make a reflection. We want to connect the reflection to the right question, which is what I just showed you, but we also want to connect it to the right template. So how do we do that? Let me walk you through it from step one. The first thing that we want to do is we want to connect the reflection that we make to the right reflection question. Now, if I were to make a new reflection here, I don't want to search through this entire database to find the right question. That would be very inefficient. And also that would mean I would have to think about what the question is. And we want to have the opposite, right? We want to have the question there present so that we could just think about the reflection. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a filter that says, okay, the reflection question should contain what were the objectives that I set out for this project. Okay, now I have this question over here. And the cool thing about Notion is whenever I now create a new reflection, because I have this filter on, it's automatically related to this question, right? So if I write my reflection, it's automatically related to this question, right? So that is step number one. I now have this question over here. And as soon as I answer it, it is going to be related to that reflection. But the second thing that I want to do is relate this reflection to the proper project template. And this is why this reflections database has a relationship to every other database in which we do reflections, right? So we have reflections during our daily review. We have them during our weekly review, during our monthly review, in our project tracker, in our vision goals. These are all elements inside the Notion system that have a template and inside that template, there are going to be reflection questions, right? So let me, for example, open up this core insights database, go to this template. Over here, you can see these are the reflection questions that we ask for this specific element inside of this template. So throughout this whole system, we have reflection questions everywhere and they're always embedded inside these different templates. So going back to that reflections database, over here you can see it's related to all of these different databases. Now, for this particular view, we want to relate it to the right project tracker. So what we're going to say over here is that the project tracker needs to contain new project template. We want it to contain the template. Why do we want it to contain a template? Well, I could manually link a question to that specific project, but what is cool about Notion is that when I link it to the template, and I would then actually go into this template, right? And I've done that over here, right? I link it to the template. You can see filter project tracker contains new project template. The moment I generate this template and actually turn this into a new cool project, this filter over here has automatically changed to where project tracker contains a new cool project. So if we set the filter to the template, whenever we generate that template, the filter is automatically changed. Now, had I, for example, not done that beforehand, right? Let's say in this template, I actually just set it
to this dummy entry, a notion of life, boom. And now I were to create this template. What will happen after it loads? Because let's call this one new cool project again. What will happen is that over here, you see it's already showing these reflections from this different project, which makes sense because the filter is set to contain dummy project. And I would then have to go manually in here, new cool project, remove this. So that would take a lot of time. I would have to reapply these filters every single time I generate a template. So that is why always we set this filter to the template. I'm just going to change that back. I'm going to say new project template. I'm going to change this filter back to saying where it contains template. Boom. Okay. So now we have done that, which means that whenever we create a reflection in here, it will automatically be linked to the reflection questions and it will automatically be linked to the proper project tracker. So the next thing that we want to do is to add some more reflection questions to this view because we don't just have one question in there. Maybe we have three or four questions that we want to ask all in one go. So for now, I'm just going to say which vision goal does this contribute to and how does it contribute to that vision goal? And by doing this, we now make it so that all of these reflection questions will be displayed in this view. So now when I create a new reflection, it could also be linked to which vision goal does it relate to? And then I'm going to remove number one. And you see this question here stays because we just changed this filter to also include this particular question. But a problem arises. If you paid attention, you see that when I create a new reflection right now, it is automatically linked to this first question from the filter. And we don't want that. We want to be able to create this reflection and instantly start writing. Otherwise, we would have to go in here, find the right one, and then, oh, accidentally misclick, boom, we have to refilter it, have to go back. It's a lot of work. So how do we solve for this issue? Well, that's where the next step comes in. What we want to do is we want to take this database and we want to group it by reflection question. And I'm going to show you what that does. So I'm going to say, group this database by reflection question. And now you can see that it creates these different sections in the database, which are all the entries related to a specific question. So this entry right here is related to this question. That's why it's grouped over here. If I were to relate it to the third one we have over here, you can see this new category pops up and we could have multiple ones in here. But the cool thing now is that whenever I create an entry in a specific group, it is automatically related to the right question. So instead of having to do the question manually, when I create a new reflection over here, it's automatically linked to this question. And when I create it over here, it's automatically linked to this question. So now we don't have to manually change that question. And of course, because we also have this template filter, it's also related to this project tracker template, right? So we're now already assigning two things automatically, which is a really great start. Now, this over here looks a little bit chaotic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the layout and I'm going to turn this into a list layout. And then maybe at the property of the date that the reflection is created. And like this, the whole thing already looks much, much cleaner. And whenever I'm going to do my reflection, I can simply pop open this bad boy and making my make a new reflection over here. Then I can open this and I can use the writing space to make a deeper reflection. This is the core setup of how all the reflection questions are resurfaced throughout the system. Now there's a few more things that we need to do because the moment I would delete all of these pages, this one is going to disappear from the view. Now it's going to be in this hidden group. So I could open it up, right? Let's do all of these. I'm going to could open them up. And then inside the grouping, I could arrange them, set this to manual, and then put them one question, second question, third question. And this might already look great. You might be like, yeah, this works. If this is what I see in my template, I can create this new entry. And just like that, it would work. Unfortunately, there is a bug in Notion that if you just organize things like this and you open it up in a template, 
the grouping gets all mashed up. The whole thing breaks down. I tried building this. I have no clue why this happens. So we need to fix this bug. The way we're going to do this is I'm just for now going to delete this filter over here. And then I'm going to turn this one into an advanced filter. So the first thing that we said is the reflection that we make needs to contain these reflection questions, right? It's only going to show us reflections that contain these reflection questions. And then the next filter that I'm going to make is going to say, and the project tracker contains the project template. So it's only going to show us the questions related to the specific template. But you can see over here, if I do that, I get these hidden groups because no reflections are currently related to this template because it's always generated anew. So it's always going to hide these groups. So in order to help us still see the questions, we add one more filter. So we're going to make this into a separate group and we're going to say, okay, and it needs to show the questions that are related to this template or the reflection itself contains this X symbol, boom. And now I'm going to save that one. And now you can see that actually these questions are being displayed over here. Now, how does this work? This is a little workaround that I created. Basically what I've done is that whenever there is a question inside of this database, they're always related to one of these X's. Now these X's are different pages. It's not just one page named X. It's actually a different page named X. And each one of them is related just to the questions that I want to show, right? So this one is related to these two questions. This one over here is related to these three questions. And then this one over here is related to these four questions. So we do this so that whenever we create a few, it only shows these questions that are related to this page over here, right? So when we go back into our reflections database, and let's, for example, go to our um, daily shutdown, over here you can see we have this filter which says the reflection questions need to contain one of these three questions. It needs to con contain this daily review template, or it needs to contain this X. And over here you can see it contains this X and this X is related to all of these questions. If I were to remove one of these questions over here, you can see it also disappears from the view. So that's why we all relate them to this X. Now, if I were to add another page, for example, one from the project tracker, that one's now also going to show here because this reflection of X does indeed contain these questions. And because it contains those questions, right? The reflection contains those questions, it's also going to show any other thing that is related to this particular page, right? So one page is connected to even just one of these questions, right? Even if I would remove these two, the other one is going to stay because in this filter, we just told it, show us all of the reflections that contain one of these questions and this X. So that is why it's important for us only have the page with the questions that we want to answer. Now, this is very complicated. I'm aware of this. Just know that it works this way. And just like that, we have created a reflection view. And not only have we created one reflection view, no, we created a whole bunch. Every single view that you see in the system is created in the main database. Now, this takes a lot of time to set up. If you want to do it all power to you, if you want to get straight access, you can also buy this template, have everything there. Um, but this is just how it works. We create these views. Easiest way to create a new one is to duplicate it and then just simply change the filter to match the questions for this new tab. But I've already done everything over here. We have all of these views for the separate templates. Okay. And now what we can do, we open our project tracker template. And then over here, you can already see we have all these views and I could just easily add one. Let's say, for example, I deleted the purpose view. I can simply go here, empty view, open this reflections database that we just created, go to that view, go to the purpose, simply hide that one, drag it back into place. 
just remove this little seedling over here. And now the moment when I generate this template, right, I create a new project, new cool project. Awesome. We open that one up. And then we scroll down here and you can see the filter has automatically changed from template to new cool project. And then as we're doing our reflections, we can write it in here. We can write it in here. And just like that, we can make reflections in our entire system and they're all stored in this one central database. Now, what this also allows us to do is that when we have all these reflections, we all put this in this one central database, we can also filter them to show us, for example, all of the reflections that we made in the previous month, right? This is the one we would have in the monthly review where I would have a filter that says for these questions that I have been answering during my weekly review, show me all of the reflections that I made in the past month. And we've explored this in the last video, but I'll just show you one more time. When I have my monthly review inside this template, the first thing that I do is I look back on the weekly reflections that I made in the past month. And it just neatly shows them all in one row because we have them in a central database. And I can just look, okay, what was I grateful for in the past month? And week one, I was grateful for this. Week two, I was grateful for this. And I can start spotting patterns in real time as it was unfolding. And then I can use this information to make my monthly reflections. And, and like that, we layer these reflections on top of each other. And that is why having this all in one central database is so freaking powerful. If you want to build the Notion of Life system from scratch using these videos, then all power to you. But as you saw in today's video, some parts of this system take a lot of time to craft. So if you'd rather just start using the system right now, you can go to my website and purchase the template. All of you beautiful people get a 20% discount if you go there right now. However, I never want money to be the reason people cannot get access to my material. So if for whatever reason you currently cannot afford this template, send me an email and we'll arrange something. As mentioned in the beginning of this video, all of the links, resources, and assets mentioned in this video are linked in the description down below. In the next video, we are going to explore the core insights database, which is the fundamental part of the insight phase. Now, this video is part of a series, so if you want to watch the whole thing, you can find the playlist on my YouTube channel. And for now, I just want to thank you for watching and wish you a wonderful day.